It's on chef. Cool. So this is a rack of lamb, and the end that goes towards the head is this end. And the way that I'm able to know that is, if you were to think about how it comes off the animal, it goes again from small ribs to big ribs. And then also here is the scapula. All right. Bones that we have coming off here, these are the feather bones. So it would come off the animal just like this. The, the bone that's been removed is what? Chine. Chine bone, good. So these are feather bones. What are these bones here called? Loin. Loin. Rib bones, right? The loin bones would be down in the loin section, finger or loin bones, okay? So could we do uh, a porterhouse of lamb? Yeah. Totally, right? If it has a spine and it has muscles, we can do a porterhouse of lamb. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to position it here, come in <laughs> underneath the feather bones, and pull those off. Right, I'm going to do this one all the way through. So I'm coming down here so that I can see the, the back strap. I'm going to do this one all the way through and then we'll do one step by step. Okay? So cut that off. And that back strap is what helps to hold the head upright. I always say it looks like banana flavored bubble gum. It's kind of that funky, cheesy banana color. And yeah. T it doesn't taste like banana flavored bubble gum. But Who makes banana flavored bubble gum? Bubblicious. So, it's bu see the color? Or like banana taffy or something? Yeah. But pass that around because it's a great representation of elastin. And this is going to go to our bone pile, the feather bones. Megan! <clears throat> Alright, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to remove the scapula. So we're going to come in underneath. The scapula kind of comes around right here. Come in on top of that scapula. Until you can see the outline of it. So now I can see the outline of that. I'm going to come in underneath and do the same thing. And then pull the scapula out. Now some of you are going to have different sized scapulas. This I can tell come, came from a relatively large animal because this is the back side of the scapula. Okay? Where would the other piece of the scapula be? In what primal? Shoulder. Shoulder, good. Okay. So now I've gotten that off. Now I'm going to set it upright. I'm going to look for it. This is my primary eye right here. Primary eye. This is my secondary eye, that little nubbin. I'm going to do a little C cut above that. So in the C, I mean C, not C cup, C cut. C cup, totally different. Right? So here we have primary eye, secondary eye, right above that. Okay. Then I'm going to look and I'm going to connect the dots. So I look at, I put my knife here and I'll look at this and I'll cut a straight line. So don't watch where your knife is going, watch where your knife is coming to. Same thing. So come over here. So if I was cutting a sheet of brownie, same thing. I'd look here and I'd pull my knife to that. Old carpenter's trick. So cut down here, cut straight down. Don't, don't cut like this, never, never works out well. Right, then hold it up like this. Basically what we're doing is we're making a, a perforated piece of meat. You know, like when you get a perforated piece of paper, you can tear it. Same thing is true. So now, where I have my line on the inside, I'm going to come through and I'm going to puncture through and I'm going to cut in between the ribs. In between each rib. All the way over. And don't put your hand like this. That, again, not a good... I would love to say that's never happened. <clears throat> However, it has. Now, switching to OJ, go right in the middle of the bone and what kind of connective tissue am I cutting through? Elastin. Elastin, because it's connecting muscle to bone, right? Now, what would this be if I was taking these bones out of a, a pig, out of the loin? What would these bones be called? Spare nope. Spare ribs would be here. Nope. Baby back ribs, right? Baby back ribs. These are the back ribs. What would they be called in beef? Back ribs. Beef back ribs. Or beef ribs. Right? Not beef short ribs. Beef short ribs come from the, the short plate. Okay, so these would be uh, baby back ribs, they'd be back ribs, they'd be chops in veal and lamb, uh, and they'd be back ribs in beef, baby back ribs in pork. Spare ribs in pork, Denver ribs in lamb, Denver ribs sometimes in veal, <laughs> more commonly called the breast, short ribs in beef. Okay. Now we're going to flip it up like this, we're going to take that meat and I'm just going to peel it back. So with my thumb, I'm peeling the elastin back away from the bone. I'm going to come in here and do the same thing. Peel it back so that I can get it going. Peel that back here. And just work that all the way down. Peel it around. Now, 
You're getting burly with it. Don't no no dainty bone peeling. Don't be like. You gotta get in there and a little a little growl. Sometimes that happens. Right? Push it back. So now what I'm doing is I'm using the back of my knife, the back corner, so that I can really get in against that bone and push it down. So get in, push the bone with your thumb and push down against the bone with the other side. Push it down. And if you see it's not coming like you want it to, then give it a little help. Okay, now you can come in and pull it back down to your perforation. Right? Now, sometimes the edge of that bone will be real sharp. Sometimes you'll see people take butcher's twine and wrap it around and pull it back. They pull it in, it's kind of a pelvic thrusting weird thing. I don't do that. Uh, I just do this, because I'm not afraid. You're talking about the ends of the bones, like this and right here? This, the edge, the edge okay. can sometimes be sharp. This is definitely sharp. Now, I'm pulling it down to my perforation, and see how that just peels right off? Pretty. So that comes off. So now, these are baby, basically boneless baby back ribs. Right, so I could cook those just like I would any uh, barbecue kind of piece of meat like that. Come in here, scrape those bones up so they're nice and clean. Again, no dainty. See, you hear that bone being scraped? None of this. Get in there. Ah, clean it. Don't hurt it. Respect it, but scrape it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you'll see people take green green scrubbies and peel it off that way. Um, I just think that's a mess. Right? Pull it all the way back. Make sure your bones are clean. Come in here. This is the same thing we did on the pork loin. Remember when we came in, we used the scapula as our guideline, and we took this piece of meat off here? Same muscle. We're going to peel that off. I'm going to come back to that in a second. And this is called the undercut chuck, the muscle underneath the scapula. I'm going to peel that off. Okay, now, we don't want to take all this fat off because we want it to be a nice piece for cutting into chops and for roasting. So just come back here, clean that up a little bit. We already did the other side. Going off. Right? So now that comes back nice and clean. Now we have the Wolverine. <laughs> right? Now we have this little lip of fat right here. We're going to come back and just trim that fat just a wee touch. A wee touch. A little bit. Groovy. Round that out so it's nice and clean. Now if I was going to make this into a, a, a crown roast, all I'd have to do to make a crown roast is I'd flip it over like this. Most of the chine bone has been removed. I'd cut down a little bit into each one. Remember we did the button bones on the ribeye? These are the button bones still left. What are button bones remaining sections of? Chine bone, good. So come in here like that. And now I would turn it like this and I can tie it together. And then generally what you do is you would make a force meat to go on the inside <laughs> and then you'd roast it like that. It comes out beautiful. And then you just slice in between each one and you get a little piece of the chop and a little bit of the crown roast. So that's, we're not going to do that. We're just going to make the log like that, okay? But just so it looks cool, we're going to do that. Now, we have all this trim. A lot of times what you'll see people do, because they don't want to do this very time consuming part right here. I say time consuming, ready? So we're going to trim this up. That's ready for sausage or grinding, right? The fat, some people will save the fat. I'm not a huge fan of lamb fat because it has a very dominant and overpowering flavor. Um, you can render it just like we would render any of the other fats that we've been doing it. Um, some people will actually render it and then chill it and uh, grate it on a box grater to add flavor to things. Uh, I've heard people adding it to rice or couscous, but this fat is also, see how it's, when we did the beef, remember how it's firm? It's just kind of a, it's a funky, it's also, an, it's an older animal, it's more commercial, and this is going to taste 
just like it smells. So you can pass around and smell it. It smells just lovely. Here, we're going to peel this off. Schmack. Okay. You alright? Yeah. Has anyone ever heard of felt? Yeah. The felt? This is the felt. When you see the animal twitch and they're like moving flies, this is the stuff that twitches. Okay, so another way to get this off is you can put it in the freezer just for a second to firm that fat up, but for the most part, when you get it started, it should, should peel back. Okay? Should just peel away from the fat. And see how it comes off nice and lean? And then come in here, slide that off. Boom. This is going to go to our swaggy fat pile. And then if you flatten this out, all you need to do here is just come in and take that off. We want a little bit of fat, but we don't want that to be the dominating flavor. When I make sausages, I'll make a, a merguez or a... Um, uh, Mediterranean style sausage and I'll add bacon to it and the bacon is nice and smoky and helps to take away from kind of that lamb fat but also enhances the sweetness of the lamb. <clears throat> okay, so we got all that off and we're gonna come back here and we're gonna take that off, that's all fat. Remember I said they didn't want to take it off because it was time consuming? Alright, so we got our rack uh, we have